So the next speaker is Min Yong Chung, who's going to talk about the uh, satellite population in the Agora project. giving me a chance to present our work. I am Min Yong Chong, working with Jiung Kim at Seoul National University. Uh, so this work has been carried out by a large number of members in the Agora, Agora pro project. So the Ramda Shiden models, which encompass both cold dark matter and dark energy, is widely considered the standard cosmological models. However, tension exists between the model and observational data, especially on the smaller scale. So by simply counting the number of satellite galaxies, uh, the discrepancy in their abundance has arisen uh, with the prediction of embodied simulations. So this famous problem is called missing satellite problem. So to address this kind of all these tensions, many people Many people try to uh, modify the many, many people try to solutions with modifying the lambda system models, while others has tried to solve these problems with baryonic physics. So and nowadays, many people think that due to the baryonic physics, uh, can, so all, most of these dark matter halos in the embodied simulation couldn't form stars and make them unobservable in the real universe. So, but one thing to be cautious about is that reproducing baryonic, proof, baryonic physics in a simulation is not an easy task, especially, especially for the dwarf galaxies where typically close to the resolution limit in a cosmological simulation. So we study the satellite galaxy population is consist, whether it is consistent in the numerical simulations in the Agora project. So the Agora project is a code comparison project aimed at boosting the predict power of numerical simulations. We use Cosmolon, a shoot of Jumin simulations generated by eight different codes. We classify these into the batch based and particle based code. And please note that the result in RF code is not included in this talk. In hydrodynamic simulations, we include the full astrophysical process, such as gas cooling and heating and stellar feedback. Uh, <coughs> and most importantly, we use code-dependent stellar feedback scheme, stellar feedback and metal editing scheme, <coughs> but ensure that they have, they have similar star formation history in the main target galaxies. To see the role of these baryonic physics, we also ran the dark matter only simulations as a counterpart. So we search all sub, sub halos using Rockstar Halo Finder and define satellite halos as follows. And we also observed intercode timing discrepancy in the growth of main galaxies. Although all the simulations start from, start from identical initial conditions, the same merger event occurs at slightly different times. So as satellite galaxy population is highly sensitive to this kind of major merger event, we cannot use the same rest epoch for across the old code. Instead, we use slightly different rest values of year rest two to ensure that all the codes are in the same stage in the merger history. We'll discuss timing description issue in, um, in more detail in paper four. So this snapshot shows the distribution of dark matters at left near two. And white stalkers represent uh, satellite halos and main halos identified their dark matter distribution. As we can see, all the codes 
shows similar spatial distribution and population of satellite galaxy, satellite halos. And we also noticed that the number of satellite halos is quite different from hydrodynamic simulations and dark matter simulations. Apparently, baryonic physics affects the abundance of satellite halos. So, before comparing the galaxies with observational counterpart, we first we first investigate the intercode agreement in satellite halos. We first plotted the uh, cumulative number of satellite halos by their dark matter mass and distance from the host. Once again, we can see the same result. Uh, the number of satellite halos is significantly larger in DMO simulations compared to those in hydrodynamic simulations. And we also found that a difference between mesh-based code and the difference between the mesh-based code, ART, ENZO, and, and, and LAMSES, and particle-based code in their abundance of satellite halos. So, nextly, we investigate the growth of satellite halo populations over cosmic times. And as early as last 15 or 12, uh, the number of satellite halos is much fewer in satellite uh, hydrodynamic simulations. Uh, this is because gas density fluctuation is much smoother than dark, uh, dark matters on smaller scale. So we observe that the same satellite halos, uh, the dark matter mass is 0.7, factor of 0.7 rule in the hydrodynamic simulations due to the baryonic physics. And after last eight to last five, cosmic reionization plays an important role in preventing the growth of satellite halos. And finally, after last four, various, various baryonic physics, such as tidal stripping by a solar disk or lamp pressure stripping, and supernova feedback, hitting of the gas by a supernova feedback, hinder the growth of satellite halos. So we observed that baryonic um, physics uh, hinder the halo growth regardless, regardless of specific code used. And now we let's move on to the satellite galaxies. So in this plot, we assign stellar particles to the satellite halos and see the see the intercode agreement in the satellite galaxies. So left plus shows the cumulative number of satellite galaxies by their stellar mass, and right panel shows the satellite galaxies by their dynamical mass. Uh, we, uh, as we can see in the right plot, the baryonic physics make, it, make this kind of satellite halos to difficult to create form stars inside. Uh, the, number, the number of satellite galaxies is significantly fewer than the number of satellite halos. So we compare this result with the current, current day observations. And of course, we comparing the two data with completely different last epochs. But uh, we can see that satellite galaxy population is quite well matched with the uh, observational data. Uh, of course, we show some, <coughs> and we check that whether this, this is still, still valid for the last zero. So we, we have four codes that reach close to the last, last zero. And compare this result with observational data and show that although the Intercode difference is quite increased at least near 0.3, but all the simulations shows uh, similar satellite galaxy populations with the observational data. So, so this result demonstrates that the so-called missing satellite problem is 
could be resolved with the hydrodynamics. <laughs> so, sorry. This results show that the missing satellite problem can be resolved with baryonic physics, regardless of the specific code or stellar feedback schemes. And additionally, we also check the intercode agreement in other dwarf galaxy properties, such as stellar to halo mass relations and mass metallic relations. So, although there are some intercode scatters, and we also observe that mesh based codes should have generally higher metallicities compared to the particle based code, we suspect that this is because due to the intrinsic intrinsic difference in metal transportation scheme between the two code grid. But this, all these data is matched well with observational data or previous studies. So this is my summary, start, summary, summary start slide. And uh, thank you for my, listening to my talk. Any questions? Uh, hi, I'm Han. Uh, I have a few questions about the uh, the satellite galaxy selection versus a dark matter halo selection. So, like, yeah. I understand that you find more dark matter halos than the galaxies, but my question is, if you try to find dark matter halos in the in the hydrodynamic simulation as well, do you find less a uh, smaller number of dark matter halos, or than the than the n body simulation run, or is it? So. The right panel, so dotted line shows the number of dark matter halos in hydrons. Ah, okay. Uh, so the uh, so the reason that you're resolving this is because the uh, some dark matter halos and um, does not have stellar mass. Is that the idea? Sorry. Oh. So the reason that that the missing satellite problem can be resolved is because the some of the dark matter halos does not have galaxy. Uh, so that could be, uh, so there is two main reasons. So the number of dark matter halo itself is decreased in hydrodynamic simulations. And, and that's, that's the one thing. And, and most of the dark matter halos in hydrodynamic simulation and is also uh, dark because of they cannot form stars. So this right plus shows the difference between the abundance in of dark matter halos and those with luminous, those, those with luminous stars. Yeah. I'm, curi I'm curious about uh, if you have checked the, the velocity distribution of the satellites uh, in simulation and in Mercury. Uh, so you mean stop? Uh, like, for example, the distribution of parasite distance or tangential velocity. Uh, because those may contain some information about the uh, efficiency of t tidal disruption. Yeah, so I check. I, I, I've only checked the satellite halos with their distance from the host, but I haven't checked. Uh, I haven't compared this with the observational data because it is. Actually, different apples, so yeah, different uh, apples. Right. M might be interesting to take a look at that. Um, in the DMO subhalo mass functions, there's yeah. a large dispersion between the different simulation methods. And oh. I was wondering if you could comment on where that is coming from, and in particular, how you're comparing the um, for softening scale and the grid-based codes to the particle-based codes. Uh, yeah, so for the first questions, uh, we, we think that the intercode difference is much severe in the, uh, not severe, but much larger in hydrodynamic simulations. So we think that the DMO simulation shows quite good agreement intercode agreement, but uh, so, so there's some issues that, yeah, because there's some difference in gross history, so there is some timing discrepancy issues in 
all these codes, so, so these seven codes are at different redshift. So that's the, one of the reasons that that kind of, uh, that might affect the population of satellite halo. And for what is the second question? Uh, yeah. I actually had the same question, so. Uh, yeah. yeah. You, you said that one reason why there were fewer dark matter halos in the hydro runs was that the gas was smoother in the initial conditions. Yeah. At high Z, yes. At high Z. Yeah. Uh, is, is that the reason that there wound up being fewer halos? Is it a matter of that density contrast at very early times? Um, in my understanding, yes. I checked that the exact same counterparts have actually fewer dark matter mass in hydrodynamic simulations and fewer and they contain gas, less gas than cosmic average. So we think that that is because the max mass fluctuation, difference in mass fluctuation between gas and dark matter. Do you think that's real in the real universe, or is that a deficiency of the resolution in the codes? Mm, we can discuss more, but I, I saw in my understanding with the previous studies that focusing on the high-Z satellite halos, I think that it is physical ones, physical reasons, yeah. Okay, thank you. So the next speaker is Yi Meng.